Hi, and welcome to this quick tool review. This time around, I'm gonna take a look at a UFO LED high bay light by, from Sinotron. And I'm looking at this because, as I've explained many times in the past, lighting is a huge issue in my workshop. And especially with shooting, I never seem to have enough light, so I'm always looking for better solutions. And this one promises to be really interesting. It is a high bay light, which means it's designed to be mounted 14 to 17 feet above the ground for ideal spread. However, that would be for an average light level, maybe in an industrial property. I don't know what they were actually targeting. In my specific case, obviously I can't get anything close to that. The rafters in my garage are about seven feet off the ground, maybe eight. So they're significantly lower than that, but it will give me a much brighter beam. The angle of spread is about hundred degrees and the output is 24,000 lumens, which is quite significant. Uh, this might be really handy in a bunch of different locations around my shop. Currently above my surface plate, there's nowhere near enough light and this might fix that problem. Uh, the efficiency of this bulb is 150 lumens per watt and it draws 160 watts of power, which is quite a bit for an LED light. They're saying it's the equivalent of a 700 watt high pressure sodium bulb and a direct replacement. That's pretty impressive. Uh, the light color temperature is 5,000 degree Kelvin, which makes it on the blue side or that standard daylight, 5,000 to 5,500 is standard daylight color temperature. And the color rendering index is 80, so 80 plus. So it's not in the super high accuracy for color renditioning, but that's not what you're looking for typically. Uh, if you are, then you're looking for specialized bulbs. Let's take a look, let's open this up and take a look. The packaging is fairly generic. And just to point out, they sell these on Amazon in one, two, and four packs, which could be really handy. And I like the fact that they use really light gauge cardboard and recycled material, recyclable materials. This is uh, wood fiber materials and very recyclable. So I think that's great. Of course, it's made in China. Uh, IP65, so they're saying it's uh, moderately water resistant. Comes with instructions, which probably aren't necessary for most lights, but they give you several different mounting options. The one thing that's interesting about this light is that it comes with an AC plug already attached on it, which I think is very interesting because it gives you multiple mounting options. At work, uh, in the studios where I work, a lot of the high bay lights have an outlet next to them and you can just take the whole fixture down and unplug the whole fixture from the outlet. And I guess that's in case the ballast fails and or the bulb. So that's an interesting option. And they chose to do the same thing here. They put a standard, in this case, USAC uh, plug on this guy. So you could mount outlets up high and choose to use those instead, which I think is a, a very useful option potentially. Suitable for wet locations, minimum 75 five degrees centigrade supply conductors talking about the heat I guess ambient to not exceed 45 Celsius and I guess that's all based on ratings well one is cooling capability of this guy and the other has to do with this is a 105 C jacket PVC jacket AC cord it's got a mounting hook here if you choose to use it the whole back of this thing is cast aluminum and the bezel with Fresnel or a Fresnel-like uh, lens on it is plastic. It's an array of LEDs, very nice. I like the fact this is all cast aluminum. That'll make for very good uh, cooling capabilities. You should have a switching supply back here, a constant current supply to feed the LEDs. Remember, LEDs don't want a specific voltage. They want a specific current. Uh, if you feed them a specific voltage, they'll settle in whatever current that causes them to draw and the light output may not be optimal for the LED. I noticed they also have a safety chain, which is also very nice. It seemed to cover all their bases. The casting is of decent quality. The threads are acceptable. They're not very deep threads for the mounting hook. This mounting hook style will make it very easy. You can just put a, a cable around the rafters, which would let you move this around if you wanted to. Uh, this is going to be, like I said, in my uh, particular location, fairly, fairly low. Uh, so it may be too bright to be that low, but I'm hoping not because, again, like I said, in a bunch of locations when you're shooting video, you want as much light as possible because that'll give you 
your camera will close down as much as possible, giving you maximal depth of field. The more closed the iris is on the camera, you know, higher f-stop, so if it's set to f1.8, that's wide open, for example, for a fairly fast lens, or 2.8 for an average fast lens, uh, that lets a lot of light in, but you don't get much depth of field. If you put it f32, on the other hand, that's the iris mostly closed, you get very little light in, that's quite a few stops less light, but you get much better depth of field, and I'd prefer depth of field for most of my shooting situations. That way I don't have to worry about focus being on here, not here, when I'm trying to describe the whole thing. Anyways, that's more information than you wanted to know, but uh, again, lights are very valuable for me in my workshop, so I will always review them, because I have a huge array of them in my shop, and I'm not exactly happy with all of them. Uh, maybe I'll take give you a short view of what kind of lights I have in my shop already. So here's where I'm shooting this video. There's some under lighting I have under here. These are very low power, but they're just sort of fill lighting for the background. I have a four bulb Harbor Freight uh, light back here, which does a great job of lighting this whole area. But still above that, there's spots of one variety and a second variety and one of those three part lamps that you'd seen in the past. I also have a two bulb Harbor Freight over my tool chest, which also provides fill and even lighting for shooting this. And with even with all of that, this is not super bright on my workbench. It could be brighter, which is sort of amazing, right? Then around my shop, I have a bunch of these different PAR lamps, uh, LEDs, and they're like a three or 400 lumen kind of a piece. Above my lathe, I've got one, uh, several of these multi output, all different varieties. And still, this is not super bright, and those are very light bulbs. One thing I like is the fins are adjustable angles, so you can try and fill in various spots in your lathe. Even so, I still have the light on my lathe, which the rotary phase converter is off, and that's three-phase fed. So that's currently off, but I sometimes use that to fill shots here, especially when I want to shoot up the pipe, as it were, into the spindle of the lathe because when I'm doing boring operations, you need more light. And as you can see, it's not super bright down here. Plenty for my eyes, but not a lot for the camera. Then around the shop, I've got various PAR lamps and some of these multi-part. This one helps fill in my saw. The band saw was not put in a location that originally had light directly above it. I probably need to add one. That would be handy on the work table. That's why on the work table itself, I have an individual light for fill when I'm shooting any bandsaw saw shot, you're going to see that light in action because there's not a ton of light. Uh, over my surface grinder back there, I've got one of those Harbor Freight. That's a two bulb version. And there's some singles all around the shop. But as you can see, it's still not super bright in here. And here's my surface plate. And this is the packaging this thing came in. And it's not super bright here. I could definitely use more light when you're doing measuring. And over in the corner here, I've got several of these high bay lights here, which are on a separate switch, so I don't waste as much power when I'm not over here. And they provide a lot of fill light for any of the milling operations. Still, I have local lights, like this one here, and this one over here, that I use to fill in shots, because there's still not a ton of light. Plus, I have the light that I made that you saw a while ago, the spindle light, which is also very helpful. Believe it or not, there never seems to be enough light in the shop. <laughs> There's a moral to that story, right? <laughs> All right, so again, to see how important lighting is, I'm gonna turn off various and assorted lights. So here is the fluorescent light over my tool chest. That's not a huge deal, that one, because it's off to the side quite a bit. Here's the under lighting fill light, and you can see how it gets sort of dark in the background here. Leaving that one on and going to the big Harbor Freight one, there's still two overhead lights, but you can see that. And it's plenty to see by, by the way for me just sitting here, but not enough to shoot. That's with an 80 watt LED turned on in the background. And then there's the two overhead PAR lamps that fill in here and here. They're not directly overhead because there was nothing overhead, no place to attach it there. But in any case, you get the point. Lighting is really important, especially when you're trying to shoot video. For other people, this may not be as valuable, but I know there's a lot of YouTubers out there that shoot video in their garage. So this could be helpful for them. I want to take a look at the construction of this guy. So we've got a bunch of LEDs mounted 
on a PC board here. And the interesting thing will be to see, is this PC board uh, backed with aluminum like a lot of them are these days? And then that attached to this whole aluminum frame, which is, again, really great. I think that's a really nice approach. I don't know what these little red plastic bits are here, why they put them in here and what they're for. They actually had to use extra screws to attach them. There are four of them. It seems like they're just for appearance, but maybe there's something else. I don't know. That's kind of unusual. And I guess this would be the switching supply back here. So we'll open up all these sections and take a closer look. So since this is designed to work in wet areas, I expect there to be a gasket of some kind underneath here to help keep moisture out. By the way, the price for a single one of these is currently 46 bucks, roughly $45.99. That is a really good price considering uh, how bright this uh, lamp purports to be. So there's the lens assembly coming off. And there is a silicon gasket that remained attached. Very nice. These are machine screws too. Yeah, it's a silicon gasket under here, which is better than a lot of these. And yes, it is an aluminum back PC board. So it is a PC board mounted on an aluminum substrate, which I've seen a lot of these. And it looks like we've got driver MOSFETs all over the place here. I'm still guessing the switching supply is gonna be back in this main section back here, uh, but we'll have to take a look. There could be enough circuitry here to do that, although I'm not entirely certain, just looking at this guy. I am so curious why the manufacturer went to all the trouble to put these four plastic bits in here and use a screw what they're for. If anyone knows, please leave a message and uh, leave something in the comments. Uh, if you know why they're there, because I can't see a reason to have them there. And, you know, having a screw hole put in, putting a screw in, which requires a person most of the time, and having a plastic bit molded and done for this, uh, that's expensive. So there should be a reason for it. Maybe it is just appearance, but boy, that'd be, a, that'd be an expensive choice rather than just having aluminum cast all the way around. It is a very pretty uh, package, but... Uh, you know, usually once you've hung the light, you'll never look at it again. Taking a look further, there's a fuse on the front here, which is kind of interesting. That's called fuse one. That's obviously a fuse. And then they've got these, what look like resistors here um, with very small values. It'd be one zero and then by 0.01, I think. So they're using these resistors as fuses. That's an interesting choice along with MOSFETs, and it looks like, oh, there's an IC for each one of these. So maybe these are separate driver circuits for each one of these, uh, and there's no transformer, maybe direct AC conversion from the line. Here is uh, full wave bridges, two of them here. So maybe they're taking the AC in and generating DC directly. Wow, okay. This could be all there is to the PC board. This rear section may have nothing. I'm gonna be very interested to see what's back there now. This thing is really solid feeling, by the way. A lot of these feel really uh, gimmicky and kind of plasticky. This one feels really solid. I am very impressed with the build quality on this. Better than any light I've taken apart so far, for, just to let you know. This one feels like, like the real deal. All right, again, surprising. They use stainless steel hardware back here. This thing is definitely a step above every other light I've looked at so far. By the way, I forgot to mention there's a locking screw. This threads in far enough that it hits on the regular material, so this it just applies friction so it won't unscrew while you're uh, permanently mounting it. And, okay, this is really weird. This entire section here is just empty. All of the circuitry is on the PC board. This thing could have been smaller. They could have saved themselves this whole piece. I wonder if there's another variation on this or something. It's expensive. This is cast aluminum here. And that's absolutely crazy. There's even a gasket in here. Uh, this only has a grommet. This has a gasket. Um, wow, that's surprising. And the safety cable just goes around one of the legs of this guy. 
I'm a bit surprised. That's an expensive option too. By the way, these screws, they even included a split ring washer and a regular washer to apply a little tension on the threads so that the uh, vibration wouldn't cause them to become loose. All in all, I just get more and more impressed at the build quality of this thing. Again, I stand by my original assessment. This is easily the best made light I've seen yet. Uh, I don't know about the, the quality of the light itself, but we're about to find out. All right, so I put these Scotch-Brite pads here. They're sort of used, but they're fairly dark, so they give you a feel for this. Currently, I don't have the light directly above because I don't have a beam directly above, but I'm going to try and get it close here. I'm going to hold it manually. And one more minor gripe is they put one of these blade protectors on the plug. Why? Why waste the plastic to put in a landfill for this? I mean, it, it looks nice, but you immediately take it off and throw it away and never use it again. I have another question here, which I don't know the answer to. Why is it that in the U.S., all of the blades on normal plugs have holes in the end? What is that for? Anyone have any idea? Leave a comment. I'd love to know the answer to that. All right. Let's fire this guy up. Wow, holy cow, that's blindingly bright. Now it's supposed to be 14 feet up in the air. The uh, light distribution is very, very flat. Uh, their lens does an outstanding job of not having uh, light and dark spots. So the camera has corrected, but you can see the difference there. That is fantastic. Okay, I like everything about this light so far. It is utterly fantastic. I'm going to have to buy some more of these for my workshop and replace some of the other choices, uh, lighting choices I have around here because this is really superior. And, and although this may appear super bright, although you can't really tell on camera because the camera is compensating, it is saying that it's sunlight. <laughs> it's got a little symbol on the screen saying you're shooting outdoors, uh, which I, it never is on inside the shop here. As soon as I take this off, uh, I lose that symbol. But... Uh, <laughs> the the quality is truly amazing it's very even light which is hard to do so their lens design is very good all right so here's my surface plate here is the brochure for the light let me just pop this guy on now granted this guy is only about four feet above it but that is wonderful lighting so much so that it's blowing out on the camera <laughs> let's see if i can get autofocus to pick on that just for a sec yeah, so it's focused on there, but uh, can't expose. There's too much light for it to even expose that. This is awesome for me to look at, though. I can read the indicators and everything else much more easily, especially as my eyes get older. Final thoughts on the Cineton LED high bay light are that it is easily one of easily the best light I have ever reviewed, bar none. The light dif light distribution is very 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 even i can't believe it just considering the simple fresnel they've got on the front how even that light is they did a fantastic optical engineering job on it uh, the life expectancy of this guy is fifty thousand hours they have a five-year warranty on this uh, sometimes collecting on those things can be a bit of a challenge but they claim to have a five-year warranty uh, it's very bright uh, it comes with safety Safety cable and hanging capability. I like the AC plug sort of option because you don't have to hardwire it if you don't want to. If you want to hardwire it, they said just cut the wire and uh, use those wires. Uh, also very handy. And the price is $45. Fantastic. I give it two thumbs up. Again, easily the best light I've ever reviewed.